Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the present perfect tense. Let's get started. Now we use the present perfect to describe past events which are connected to the present. Although this tense can be used to describe different situations. Have a look at the example over here. Sam has lost his keys meaning that he is looking for his keys and he still hasn't found them. We use have or hasn't plus verb ed or just a verb. And for the negative, we use haven't or hasn't plus verb ed or just a verb. Have a look at the examples below. Positive sentence. I have already seen that movie. I've already seen that movie. Negative. I have not seen that movie yet. I haven't seen it yet. Question form. Have I seen that movie? Now the present perfect is used to describe a experience in our life up to now. Have a look at the example over here. I've been to Spain and Portugal. I really want to go to the UK. I haven't been there yet. B. An event in the past that has a result in the present. For example, Lily has broken her foot. Her foot is still in a cast. Past event. Lily has broken her foot. Result in the present. Her foot is still in a cast. C. A situation that started in the past and continues until the present. For example, I've lived here for 20 years and I'm still living here now. Continues until the present. D. An event in the past that has a result in the present. For example, Peter has read 50 pages of this book so far. There are 150 pages left. Now make sure to pay attention to the time markers. Let's have a look at those time markers. A. We use ever and never to ask or talk about our experiences in life. For example, have you ever eaten Chinese food? I've never eaten it. B. We use already to describe an action which has happened before. And we use yet to describe an action which hasn't happened before. Have a look at the example over here. I haven't finished this book yet. And my sister has already begun reading another one. C. We use just when we describe a very recent event. Have a look at the example over here. My mom has just come home from work. D. Always, often, etc. can be used in the present perfect, as in the example over here. He has always loved Dan. E. We use for to describe the length of a time period, and we use since to describe the point when the time period started. Have a look at the example over here. Chris has worked here for five months. Length of a time period. He has worked here since May 5th. May 5th. The point when the time period started. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use the auxiliary verb to have and the past participle to make sentences in the present perfect. Now read the following sentences and form questions by inverting the subject and have or has. Form negatives with not and use contracted forms. Anything to happen. Interesting, since I left. 
Yeah, Ashley and Peter to decide to get married. Monica to get her driving license, but her aunt Pauline not to give up smoking yet. Has anything interesting happened since I left? Yeah, Ashley and Peter have decided to get married. Monica has got her driving license, but Aunt Pauline hasn't given up smoking yet. Note that the present perfect can be used to describe different situations. Now read the following sentences and provide the present perfect form of the words in the bracket. I to be to Poland and Czech Republic. I not to be to Hungary yet. I've been to Poland and Czech Republic. I haven't been to Hungary yet. Patrick to crush his car. He has to take a bus to work. Patrick has crushed his car. He has to take a bus to work. She to work for this company for five years. She deserves a pay raise. She's worked for this company for five years. She deserves a pay raise. I to write the introduction part so far. I not to do anything else. I've written the introduction part so far. I haven't done anything else. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate time markers. Never, for, yet, ever, since, already. Has your brother helped you with homework? He has done that, actually. Has your brother ever helped you with homework? He has never done that, actually. Have you made up your mind? Yes, I've decided what to do. I've just booked my flights. Have you made up your mind yet? Yes, I've already decided what to do. I've just booked my flights. Rob has played football. He was a kid. He has played football every day, 15 years. Rob has played football since he was a kid. He has played football every day for 15 years. Here is a short story using the present perfect tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Have you seen John anywhere? No, I haven't seen him anywhere. Have you tried calling him? Yes, I've just sent him a voice message. Has he listened to it? It's impossible. I've just sent it. Has anything happened? Not really. But I haven't seen him since the party and I'm a bit worried. He's never ignored my calls before. I'm sure it'll be fine. He's been busy probably. And now, Time for you to practice on your own. Match the sentences below and the descriptions. 1. Cindy has graduated and is paying off her student loans now. 2. They've been best friends for nearly a decade. They always help each other. 3. Lily is on a diet. She's lost 5 kilos so far. 4. Nate has seen nearly all Marvel movies. A. Experiences in our life up to now. B. An event in the past that has a result in the present. C. 
a situation that started in the past and continues until the present. D. To describe how many things are completed so far. And now, read the following sentences and write the correct answer. A. I not to see him so angry before. B. Would you like something to eat? No, thanks. I to have just dinner. C. Shall I pay for our meal? I to do already it. D. And not to call me yet. And now, provide answers for the following questions. A. Have you ever been to the UK? B. Have your friends thrown you a surprise B-Day party? C. What have you always dreamt of doing? And now, let's check your answers. Cindy has graduated and is paying off her student loans now. This is an event in the past that has a result in the present. They've been best friends for nearly a decade. They always help each other out. This is a situation that started in the past and continues until the present. Lily is on a diet. She's lost five kilos so far. This is to describe how many things are completed so far. Nate has seen nearly all Marvel movies. This is an experience in our life up to now. I've never seen him so angry before. Would you like something to eat? No thanks, I've just had dinner. Shall I pay for our meal? I've already done that. Anne hasn't called me yet. Sample answers. No, I've never been to the UK. Yes, my friends have thrown me a surprise B-Day party once. I've always dreamt of climbing Mount Everest. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the present perfect continuous. Let's get started. Now, we use the present perfect continuous when we talk about an action, quite a long one, which began in the past and has recently or just stopped. Now, this tense usually emphasizes, one, on the duration of the action, two, that the action is temporary, and three, that the action is repeated. Now have a look at the example over here. Is it snowing now? No, it isn't, but there is five centimeter of snow outside. It has been snowing all night. Note that the sentence, it has been snowing all night, is in the present perfect continuous form. And it's used to talk about an action that has just stopped and also to emphasize on how long it had been snowing. Now to form the present perfect continuous, we use have or has plus been plus verb ing. Have a look at the examples over here. Positive sentence, Anne has been waiting for Sam for over an hour. Negative sentence, Anne 
hasn't been waiting for Sam for over an hour. She has been waiting for only ten minutes. Question form: Has Anne been waiting for Sam for over an hour? Another question: How long has Anne been waiting for Sam? Now we can use phrases such as all day, all morning, for days, for ages, lately, recently, since, for, etc. With the present perfect continuous tense, have a look at the examples over here. My brother has been playing tennis since he was seven. I haven't been feeling well recently. How long have you been learning English? I've been learning it for five years. Non-continuous verbs, for example, to love, hate, know, want. Etc. are not used in any continuous tenses. Make sure to use the present perfect instead. Have a look at the examples over here. I've been wanting to visit Paris for years. Note that this sentence would be incorrect because the verb want cannot be used in any continuous tense. The correct form would be I've wanted. To visit Paris for years. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use has or have plus been plus verb ing to make sentences in the present perfect continuous. Now read the sentence below and provide the present perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket. I to work here since two thousand and five. I have been working here since two thousand and five. Now use contracted forms. For example, I'll, am,、um, etc. I have been working here since two thousand and five. I've been working here since two thousand and five. Remember the reform questions by inverting the subject in has or have. Now read the following question, and provide the present perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket. What you to do lately? What have you been doing lately? And make sure to form negatives by using not. Use contracted forms in the following sentence. I not to do much. I've been feeling quite lazy. I haven't been doing much. I've been feeling quite lazy. And now read the sentences below and find time markers. It's been raining all day. All day. Peter. Has been staying in a hotel for the past week, but he is going back home in two days. The past week, two days. I've been trying to call her for days, but she never picks up the phone. For days, never. Here is a short story using the present perfect continuous tense. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Hey Pam, long time no see. Oh, hi Steve. Yeah, that's true. What have you been doing lately? Well, I've been trying to find a job in Germany for the past six months, but it's really difficult to find something with my level of German. How long have you been learning it? I've been learning it on my own for a year. Come to think of it, I've heard some really good comments about our local speaking club. Hmm, I haven't heard of it. I'll check it out. Maybe we could grab a cup of coffee next week. Yeah, sure. 
I'll give you a call. Bye. Sounds great. Bye. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and provide the correct form. A. Lily to watch movies all night. B. His grandpa not to feel well for the past week. C. How long you to smoke? And now, match the sentences below. 1. Where is Tom? 2. You're out of breath. 3. There are puddles everywhere. 4. Why are your clothes so dirty? A. Have you been running? B. Has it been raining today? C. We've been here for ages. D. What have you been doing? And now, provide answers for the following questions. A. How long have you been learning English? B. What have you been doing this month? C. Have you been exercising lately? And now, let's check your answers. Lily has been watching movies all night. His grandpa hasn't been feeling well for the past week. How long have you been smoking? Where is Tom? We've been here for ages. You're out of breath. Have you been running? There are puddles everywhere. Has it been raining today? Why are your clothes so dirty? What have you been doing? Sample answers. I've been learning English for eight years. I've been trying to improve my cooking skills. Sadly, I haven't been exercising lately. I've been feeling lazy for the past month. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the past perfect tense. Let's get started. Now, we use the past perfect to show clearly that one past event happened before another past event. Note that we use the past perfect in the earlier event. Have a look at the example over here. When I arrived at the party, Tom wasn't there. He had gone home. Note that the sentence, he had gone home, is in the past perfect tense, and it's used to talk about what happened before I arrived at the party. Now, to form the past perfect, we use had plus verb ed, or just the verb. In the negative, hadn't plus verb ed, or just the verb. Have a look at the examples over here. Question form. Had Kate gone to bed when you arrived home? Positive sentence. Yes, she had. She had gone to bed when I arrived home. She'd gone to bed. Negative sentence. No, she hadn't. She hadn't gone to bed when I arrived home. Note. That the past perfect I had done is the past of the present perfect I have done. Have a look at the differences below. Present. I'm not hungry. I've just had breakfast. Your room is dirty. You haven't cleaned it for months. Past. I wasn't hungry. 
I just had breakfast. Your room was dirty. You hadn't cleaned it for months. Now we can use the past perfect with phrases such as to think, know, be sure, realize, remember, suspect, understand, etc. Have a look at the examples below. She was sure she hadn't locked the door. When I got home, I realized I'd left my computer at Starbucks. Now, many speakers use the past perfect in case of before or after to show a strong connection between the two events. Have a look at the following sentences. Pam left her house before her parents arrived. Now, this sentence is in the past simple. And in this sentence, Pam had left her house before her parents arrived. Now, this is the past simple plus past perfect. Now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use the auxiliary verb had and the past participle to make sentences in the past perfect. Now, read the sentence below and provide the past perfect form of the words in the bracket. Frank spilled milk right after I to clean the kitchen. Frank spilled milk right after I had cleaned the kitchen. Remember the two form questions by inverting the subject and had and to form negatives with not. Now read the following sentences and provide the past perfect form of the words in a bracket. Make sure to use contracted forms. Anything to happen before I came? Yes, Julie was here. She to leave you a note right before you came. Had anything happened before I came? Yes, Julie was here. She'd left you a note right before you came. Also remember that the past perfect I had done is the past of the present perfect I have done. Now read the sentence below and provide the present perfect form of the words in the bracket. Your car is a mess. You not to clean it for a month. Your car is a mess. You haven't cleaned it for a month. And now provide the past perfect of the words in a bracket. Your car was a mess. You not to clean it for a month. Your car was a mess. You hadn't cleaned it for a month. Also remember, that the past perfect is often used with verbs of thinking, like to think, know, be sure, etc. Now read the sentence below and provide the past perfect form of the words in the bracket. And then I to understand that she to lose my trust completely. And then I understood that she'd lost my trust completely. Remember that many speakers use the past perfect to show a strong connection between the two events. Now provide the past perfect form of the sentence below. They called the cops right after they saw the robbery. They called the cops right after they'd seen the robbery. Here is a short story using the past perfect tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Why didn't Anne take Spanish classes last semester? Because she'd taken them at the beginning of her studies. Had she completed the course successfully? 
Yes, she had. She'd passed it with a perfect score. She hadn't done a single mistake. Wait, I heard that she didn't pass the exam. I don't know what you're talking about. The teachers had never been so happy to have a student like her. Maybe that's not Anne I'm talking about. I've forgotten the name of the girl. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using before or after. A. It was eleven o'clock when Pete left for his night shift. You came home at midnight. Pete had gone. You came back. B. It was 8 a.m. when the lesson started. You came to school 20 minutes earlier. B. It was 8 a.m. when the lesson started. You came to school 20 minutes earlier. Lessons had started. You came to school. C. It was a busy afternoon for you, but in the evening you had a nice bath. You had a nice bath. You had a busy afternoon. And now, write the correct sentence. A. They didn't want to eat my cake. They just to finish their dinner. B. My mom wasn't at home when I came back from school. She just to go out. C. I was very happy to see Nate. I not to see him for three years. D. We arrived late. The movie already to begin. And now, Answer the following questions. A. What had you done right before college graduation? B. What had you done right after college graduation? C. Had you cleaned your apartment before you went on a summer vacation? And now, let's check your answers. It was 11 o'clock when Pete left for his night shift. You came home at midnight. Pete had gone before you came back. It was 8 a.m. when the lesson started. You came to school 20 minutes earlier. Lessons had started after you came to school. It was a busy afternoon for you, but in the evening you had a nice bath. You had a nice bath after you had a busy afternoon. They didn't want to eat my cake. They just finished their dinner. My mom wasn't at home when I came back from school. She just went out. I was very happy to see Nate. I hadn't seen him for three years. We arrived late. The movie had already begun. Sample answers. I'd started studying for my exams right before college graduation. I'd had a huge party right after college graduation. Yes, I'd cleaned my apartment before I went on a summer vacation. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the past perfect continuous tense. Let's get started. Now, we use the past perfect continuous when we talk about an action 
quite a long one which began in the past and continued up until another time in the past have a look at the example over here sammy had been playing with his food when his mom walked into the kitchen note that this sentence is in the past perfect continuous tense and it's used to talk about an action that began in the past and continued up until another time in the past now to form the past perfect continuous tense we use had plus been plus verb ing let's have a look at the examples below positive sentence tom was very tired when he got home he had been working all day or he'd been working all day negative sentence tom wasn't very tired when he got home he hadn't been working all day question form why was tom tired when he got home had he been working all day let's have a look at the difference between i have been working versus i had been working present form i hope the bus comes soon we've been waiting for thirty minutes past at last the bus came we'd been waiting for thirty minutes present lily is out of breath she has been running past form lily was out of breath she had been running now we can use the past perfect continuous tense with phrases such as all day all morning four days for ages when etc have a look at the examples below samantha went to the doctor last monday she hadn't been feeling well for some time my sister had been playing with her friends outside for an hour when it started to rain heavily remember the non-continuous verbs such as to love hate know want etc are not used in any continuous tenses make sure to use the past perfect instead have a look at the examples over here we were good friends we had been knowing each other for years now this sentence would be incorrect because the verb know cannot be used in any continuous tenses the correct form would be we were good friends we had known each other for years now let's review and practice a bit remember that we use had plus been plus verb ing to make sentences in the past perfect continuous now read the following sentence and provide the past perfect continuous form of the verb in the bracket and make sure to use contracted forms when the boys entered the room it was clear that they to fight when the boys entered the room it was clear that they'd been fighting also remember to form questions by inverting the subject and had and form negatives by using not now read the following sentence and provide the past perfect continuous form of the verbs in the bracket and again make sure to use contracted forms fred looked tired he to work on his project the whole night he not to work on it the whole night he to party instead fred looked tired had he been working on his project the whole night he hadn't been working on it the whole night he'd been partying instead note the difference between the present perfect continuous and the past perfect continuous now this sentence is in the present perfect continuous nancy is exhausted she has been running errands now provide the past perfect continuous of the sentence nancy was exhausted she had been running errands 
Also remember that we use time markers to emphasize the duration of the action. Now read the sentence below and provide the past perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket. I stayed at my friend's place in Paris. He not to live there very long, but he knew the city very well. I stayed at my friend's place in Paris. He hadn't been living there very long, but he knew the city very well. Also note that non-continuous verbs are not used in continuous tenses. Now provide the correct form of the following sentence. Their issues weren't resolved. They had been hating each other since they were kids. They had hated each other since they were kids. Here is a short story using the past perfect continuous tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. It seemed to me that your brother was depressed a year ago. Yeah, he'd been feeling down since he lost his job. Could you just imagine that? He got a perfect job at one startup company, the launch was going smoothly, and then seven months later, they lost the funding. So at the time the company lost the funding, your brother had been working there for seven months? Correct. We know that it seemed like such a short period of time for some people. But my brother had been dreaming about this amazing job opportunity for years. Yeah, I understand that. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Make sentences using the words in brackets. A. I had to cancel my trip due to I to plan this trip for months. B. Mike didn't hear Lucy when she asked for help in the kitchen. He to listen to music in his room. C. I was extremely tired when I got home. I to work hard all day. D. When I entered the room, Kate turned off the TV. She to watch a soap opera. And now, put the verbs into the past perfect I had done or the past perfect continuous I had been doing form. A. We were good friends. We to know each other for nearly a decade. B. I was annoyed because my friends were late and I to wait for an hour. C. Pupils were sitting on the ground. They were out of breath. They to run. And now, read the situations and complete the sentences. A. We played beach volleyball yesterday. Half an hour after we began playing, it started to rain. We, for half an hour, when it started to rain. B. My aunt got a job at the supermarket. Two years later, it closed down. At the time the supermarket closed down, my aunt there for two years. C. 
The band started playing, and after about fifteen minutes, the singer showed up. At the time the singer showed up, the band for about fifteen minutes. And now let's check your answers. I had to cancel my trip due to work. I'd been planning this trip for months. Mike didn't hear Lucy when she asked for help in the kitchen. He'd been listening to music in his room. I was extremely tired when I got home. I'd been working all day. When I entered the room, Kane turned off the TV. She'd been watching a soap opera. We were good friends. We hadn't known each other for nearly a decade. I was annoyed because my friends were late, and I'd been waiting for an hour. Pupils were sitting on the ground. They were out of breath. They'd been running. We had been playing for half an hour when it started to rain. At the time the supermarket closed down, my aunt had been working there for two years. At the time the singer showed up, the band had been playing for about fifteen minutes. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the future perfect tense. Let's get started. Now we use the future perfect to look back from one point in the future to an earlier event. Now the situation has not happened yet, but at a certain time in the future, it will happen. Have a look at the example over here. By next week, I'll have written 20 pages from my new book. Now this sentence is in the future perfect tense, and it's used to describe a situation that has not happened yet, but will happen in the future. Now to form the future perfect, we use will plus have plus verb ed, or just the verb, the past participle. Have a look at the examples below. Positive sentence. John will have arrived here by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Negative sentence. He won't have arrived here by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Question four. Will he have arrived here by 5 p.m. tomorrow? Now we can also use the future perfect with by plus time expression. Have a look at the examples below. Won't they have invited us by Friday? James will have finished his thesis by this time next week. We can also use the future perfect with Time expressions such as, when, as soon as, as, before, by the time, etc. Have a look at the examples below. Will you have dressed up when I picked you up? By the time you read this, I will have left the city. Note, the future perfect is used only for actions that will be completed by a particular time in the future. Now, if the deadline is not mentioned, make sure to use the future simple instead. Have a look at the examples below. She will leave her hometown. Future simple. She will have left her hometown. No deadline mentioned. And so, this sentence would be incorrect. The correct form would be, she will have left her hometown by this time next year. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use will plus have plus the past participle to make sentences in the future perfect tense. Now read the sentence below and provide the future perfect form of the words in the bracket and make sure to use contracted forms. By next Monday, I to finish this project. By next Friday, I'll have finished this project. Also remember to form questions by inverting the subject and will, and form negatives with not. Now read the sentences below and provide the future perfect form of the words in the bracket, 
and make sure to use contracted forms. You to arrive at the hotel by 7 p.m.? I not to arrive there by that time. I to arrive at the hotel by 10 p.m. Will you have arrived at the hotel by 7 p.m.? I won't have arrived there by that time. I'll have arrived at the hotel by 10 p.m. Note that we use by plus time expression to show that the situation has not happened yet, but at a certain time in the future, it will happen. Now read the sentence below and provide the future perfect form of the words in the bracket. They to invite us by Friday? Won't they have invited us by Friday? Also note that we use when, as soon as, before, or by the time to show the sequence of events. Now read the sentence below and provide the future perfect form of the words in the bracket. As soon as you finish cooking, I to set the table. As soon as you finish cooking, I'll have set the table. Also remember that the future perfect is only used for actions that will be completed by a particular time in the future. Now if the deadline is not mentioned, make sure to use the future simple instead. Now read the following sentence which is in the future simple and provide the future perfect form of the sentence. I won't do it. I won't have done it by tomorrow. Future perfect. Here is a short story using the future perfect tense. Now listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure to understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. What are your goals, Jenny? I'll have got a BA in history by next year, and I'll have completed my studies at a grad school by 2020. That sounds great. Do you have any plans for summer? Well, I'll have successfully passed TOEFL by June, and uh, as soon as I do that, I'll have sent my application for one internship. Jenny, you're so hardworking. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct phrase. A. We'll have moved, we'll move to our new apartment by Tuesday. B. Don't forget to call me when you land, you'll have landed. C. Wait for me. I'll be, I'll have been ready in that moment. D. By this time tomorrow, Sarah will have met, will meet her friends from college. And now, Put the verbs into the future simple, I will do, or the future perfect, I will have done, form. A. Jimmy to spend all his savings before the end of the trip. B. Call me after 8 p.m. I to finish dinner by then. C. You to see Angela tomorrow? If yes, can you give this book back to her? And now, 
answer the following questions. A. Will you have moved to a new place by October? B. Will you have finished your English homework by 8 p.m. tomorrow? C. Where will you spend your summer vacation? And now, let's check your answers. Will I have moved to our new apartment by Tuesday? Don't forget to call me when you land. Wait for me. I'll be ready in a moment. By this time tomorrow, Sarah will have met her friends from college. Jimmy will have spent all his savings before the end of the trip. Call me after 8 p.m. I'll have finished dinner by then. Will you see Angela tomorrow? If yes, can you give this book back to her? Sample answers. No. I won't have moved to a new place by October. Yes, I'll have finished by 8 p.m. tomorrow. I will be at my grandparents in the countryside. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the future perfect continuous tense. Let's get started. Now we use the future perfect continuous when we describe an action, quite a long one, that has begun sometime in the past, present, or future, and is expected to continue in the future. Have a look at the example over here. When Peter turns 40, he will have been painting for 35 years. Now this sentence is in the future perfect continuous tense and it's used to describe an action that has begun in the past and will continue in the future. Now to form the future perfect continuous tense, we use will plus have plus been plus verb ing. Have a look at the examples over here. Positive sentence. At 6 o'clock, I will have been waiting here for an hour. Or, at that time, I'll have been waiting here for an hour. Negative sentence. I won't have been waiting here for an hour at 6 o'clock. Question form. Will I have been waiting here for an hour at 6 o'clock? Now we use the future perfect continuous tense with by plus time expression. Have a look at the examples below. By 2025, he'll have been living in London for 10 years. We can also use the future perfect continuous tense with when, as soon as, before, by the time, etc. It's in the example over here. When I completed my studies, I have been learning English for 17 years. Remember the non-continuous verbs such as to love, hate, no, want, etc. are not used in any continuous tenses. Now make sure to use the future perfect instead. Have a look at the examples below. In March, I'll have been knowing you for a year. Now this sentence would be incorrect because the verb know cannot be used in any continuous tenses. The correct form would be in March, I'll have known you for a year. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use will plus have plus been plus verb ing to make sentences in the future perfect continuous. Now read the sentence below and provide the future perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket. Make sure to use contracted forms. I to live in this country for five years in February. I'll have been living in this country for five years in February. 
also remember that we form questions by inverting the subject and will. We form negatives by using not. Now read the sentences below and provide the future perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket and make sure to use contracted forms. When I come home at 7, you to do your homework for a long time? I not to do my homework for a long time at 7. When I come home at 7, will you have been doing your homework for a long time? I won't have been doing my homework for a long time at 7. Also remember that we use by plus time expression to show that the situation has begun sometime in the past, present, or future and is expected to continue in the future. Now read the sentence below and provide the future perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket. By this time next year, Kelly to work on her presentation for a month. By this time next week, Kelly will have been working on her presentation for a month. Also remember that we use time markers to emphasize the duration of the action. Now read the sentence below and provide the future perfect continuous form of the words in the bracket. Next month, I to study here for three years. Next month, I'll have been studying here for three years. Note that non-continuous verbs are not used in continuous tenses. Now provide the correct form of the sentence below. By this time next year, I will have been wanting to start my own business for a decade. By this time next year, I will have wanted to start my own business for a decade. Here is a short story using the future perfect continuous tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I've just realized that by the time they finish their trip, they'll have been hiking for more than 25 days. Yeah, I know. And they won't have been sleeping in bed or having a shower in almost a month. Yeah, well, at least they won't be that picky about the food then. When we pick them up, they'll have been eating canned food for weeks. Maybe taking them straight to the buffet is a better idea. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Now make sentences using the words in brackets. A. We to wait for over an hour by the time Kim to arrive. B. How long you to study when you to graduate. C. We to drive for 12 hours when we to go to Berlin. D. My sister to teach for more than five years by the time she to leave for Europe. And now, put the verbs into the future perfect, I will have done, or the future perfect continuous, I will have been doing form. A. Pick me up after 5 p.m. I to get ready by then. B. Kate to lose all her motivation before the end of the semester.
see Jack to wait for her to say yes for two years next month. And now answer the following questions. A. Will you have been cooking for hours by the time your guests arrive? B. Will you have been working at your current position for one year next month? C. Will you have been learning English for 10 years in 2020? And now, let's check your answers. We'll have been waiting for over an hour by the time Kim arrives. How long will you have been studying when you graduate? We'll have been driving for 12 hours when we get to Berlin. My sister will have been teaching for more than five years by the time she leaves for Europe. Pick me up after 5 p.m. I'll have got ready by then. Kate will have lost all her motivation before the end of the semester. Jack will have been waiting for her to say yes for two years next month. Sample answers. Yes. I'll have been cooking for hours by the time my guests arrive. No, I won't have been working in my current position for one year next month. No, I'll have been learning English for 20 years in 2020. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the past participle. Let's get started. Now, a past participle refers to the form of a verb which is used in forming perfect and passive tenses, and sometimes used as an adjective. Now, have a look at the sentence over here. Olivia has lived in Greece for four years. In this sentence, the past participle is used to form the perfect tense, has lived. Now, we usually add ed to the base form of the regular verb to form the past participle. Have a look at the examples below. John has just painted this picture. Note that the past participle of the regular verb painted in the sentence is used in the present perfect and in the active voice. And in this sentence, this picture was painted by John a month ago. Past participle is used in the past simple and in the passive voice. Now remember that there is no pattern as to forming the past participle of the irregular verbs. Now you should always consult a dictionary whenever you're in doubt. Remember that we can use the past participle A in the perfect tenses such as the present perfect, the past perfect, and the future perfect. Have a look at the examples below. I've eaten too much. I can't move. Note that the past participle in this sentence is used in the present perfect. And in this sentence, James had already left when Pam arrived. The past participle is used in the past perfect. And in this sentence, we will have landed by that hour. Future perfect. B. In the passive voice. For example, he was driven by genuine interest and curiosity. This dress was made by a famous Italian designer. C. As an adjective. Now, in this case, Place it before a noun. Have a look at the examples below. Mike has broken his arm. Now, in this sentence, the past participle is used in the present perfect. But in this sentence, he has a 
broken arm. In this sentence, past participle is used as an adjective to describe the noun arm. Another example: Someone has stolen Anne's purse. Her purse was stolen. And now let's review and practice a bit. Read the following sentences and decide whether the past participle indicates the perfect, passive voice, or adjective. The stolen phone was found near the train station. Adjective, passive voice. I'm sure that it'll have been sold by 10 a.m. Future perfect. It was clear that John has never heard of Vegemid. Present perfect. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the past participle. I don't think that Mrs. Taylor has ever to cry. She definitely has a strong character. Cried. Do you remember what was to write on the shopping list? I forgot it at home. Written. Don't worry that much. You'll probably find it in the to lose and to find. Lost and found. Here is a short story using the past participle. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done. Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Um, I might have spilled orange juice on your dress. What? What have you done? I am supposed to wear it tonight. I don't know how it happened, and you shouldn't have left it in the living room. You know that I'm messy. Stop with these excuses. Google how we can get rid of the stain. I don't have any other dress to wear. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the past participle. A. I wouldn't have to know that if she hadn't to tell me. B. Have you to brush your teeth, sweetie? C. The movie has already to begin. We need to hurry. D. I was to wake up by my noisy neighbor. E. Sadly, my family has never to be abroad. F. I suppose that I'll have to arrive by that time tomorrow. G. Emma's phone was to steal, and now she needs to buy a new one. H. I can't imagine what can happen if a person is to strike by lightning. I. The letter was to send. Check your inbox. J. Peter doesn't possess the to require skills to apply for this job.
And now, let's check your answers. I wouldn't have known that if she hadn't told me. Have you brushed your teeth, sweetie? The movie has already begun. We need to hurry. I was woken up by my noisy neighbor. Sadly, my family has never been abroad. I suppose that they'll have arrived by that time tomorrow. Emma's phone was stolen, and now she needs to buy a new one. I can't imagine what can happen if a person is struck by lightning. The letter was sent. Check your inbox. Peter doesn't possess the required skills to apply for this job. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about phrasal verbs, give up, and turn out. Let's get started. A phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition or both. Now typically their meaning is not obvious from the meanings of the individual words themselves. Now to give up has several meanings. Let's have a look at those meanings. A. To give something up or to give up doing something means to stop doing something, especially something that you do regularly. Have a look at the examples below. Bella gave up her job and became a stay-at-home mom, meaning that Bella stopped doing her job. Why don't you give up drinking beer? Stop drinking beer. B. To give yourself or somebody up to means to allow yourself or someone else to be caught by the police or enemy soldiers. Have a look at the example over here. The burglar gave himself up to the police, meaning that he allowed himself to be caught by the police. C. To give up something means to use some of your time to do a particular thing. Have a look at the example over here. Emily didn't like giving up time to do laundry. D. To give something or somebody up means to give something that is yours to someone else. Have a look at the example over here. They had to give up their lands, meaning that they had to give their land to someone else. E. To give up on somebody or something means to stop hoping that someone or something will change or improve. Have a look at the example over here. Greg had been in a coma for a year and doctors had almost given up on him, meaning that doctors almost stopped hoping that his condition will change. F. To give yourself up to something means to allow yourself to feel an emotion completely without trying to control it. Have a look at the example below. They gave themselves up to laughter after hearing the joke, meaning that they allowed themselves to feel laughter after hearing their joke. Now to turn out also has several meanings. Let's have a look at those meanings. A. To turn out means to happen in a particular way or to have a particular result, especially one that you did not expect. Have a look at the examples over here. I thought I'd failed my exam, but it turned out fine. Unexpected result. As it turns out, they have been dating for over a year. Unexpected. James turned out to be Lily's cousin. Unexpected result. B. To turn out for means that a lot of people go to watch the event or take part in it. Have a look at the example over here. About 80% of the population turned out for the election. C. 
to turn somebody out means to force someone to leave a place permanently, especially their home. Have a look at the example below. If you don't pay the rent, they will turn you out in a week, meaning that they will force you to leave the house in a week. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use to give something up or to give up doing something when you indicate that you stop doing something, especially something that you do regularly. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate phrasal verb. July her studies because she ran out of money. July gave up her studies because she ran out of money. Also remember that we use to give up on somebody or something when you stop hoping that someone or something will change or improve. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate phrasal verb. Mike was ready to his relationship with Sarah as she wasn't supportive enough. Mike was ready to give up on his relationship with Sarah as she wasn't supportive enough. Note that we use to give yourself up to something when you allow yourself to feel an emotion completely without trying to control it. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate phrasal verb. Never sadness. Stay positive. Never give yourself up to sadness. Stay positive. Remember that we use to turn out when something happens in a particular way or has a particular result, especially one that you did not expect. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate phrasal verb. Kate thought she would spend her B-Day alone, but it that her friends had planned a surprise B-Day party for her. Kate thought she would spend her B-Day alone, but it turned out that her friends had planned a surprise B-Day party for her. Also remember that we used to turn out for when a lot of people go to watch the event or take part in it. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate phrasal verb. I think that the whole city celebration. I think that the whole city turned out for the celebration. Here is a short story using the phrasal verbs give up and turn out. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. It looks like Jerry has given up on his marriage. I barely see him together with Anne. I've never thought that it could turn out like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. It seemed like they were made for each other. But it turns out that sometimes love is not enough. Hey, don't give yourself up to depression. They're both adults. They'll work it out. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with give up or turn out. You can change the form if necessary. A. Sam broke up with Alice. It that he has never loved her. B. I can't now. I put all my effort in it. C. If you, now, you'll regret it in the future. D. 
Michael, to be the sweetest guy in the world. And now, match the following sentences. A. Could you give me some money? I need to pay the rent. B. I thought I had to go to classes today. C. Why can't you finish what you've started? 1. You're always ready to give up. 2. I don't want the landlord to turn me out. 3. Guess what? It turns out that they were cancelled. And now, answer the following questions. A. Could you give up eating sweets? B. Do many people turn out for elections? C. Do people often give up on their dreams? And now, let's check your answers. Sam broke up with Alice. It turns out that he has never loved her. I can't give up now. I put all my effort in it. If you give up now, you'll regret it in the future. Michael turned out to be the sweetest guy in the world. Could you give me some money? I need to pay the rent. I don't want the landlord to turn me out. I thought I had to go to classes today. Guess what? It turns out that they were cancelled. Why can't you finish what you've started? You're always ready to give up. Sample answers. No, I couldn't give up eating sweets. Not many people turn out for elections. Sometimes people give up on their dreams. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the phrasal verbs carry on and put off. Let's get started. Remember that a phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition or both. Now typically their meaning is not obvious from the meanings of the individual words themselves. Now, to carry on has several meanings. Let's have a look at those meanings. A. To carry on doing something or to carry on with something means to continue doing something. Have a look at the examples below. Sorry, I interrupted you. Carry on, please. You'll put on weight if you carry on eating fast food. I want to carry on with my business idea. Continue doing something. B. To carry on means to continue moving. Have a look at the example below. Carry straight on until you see the red building. Continue moving. C. To carry on something means to do or take part in a particular kind of work or activity. Have a look at the example over here. It was so noisy there that it was difficult for us to carry on a conversation. D. In spoken language, to carry on about means to speak with overwhelming enthusiasm. Have a look at the example over here. I wish my friends would stop carrying on about their trip. Speaking with overwhelming enthusiasm about the trip. Now, to put off also has several meanings. Let's have a look at those meanings. A. To put something off or to put off doing something means to delay doing something or to arrange to do something at a later time or date. 
especially because there is a problem or you do not want to do it at that time. Have a look at the examples over here. The game has been put off until tomorrow because of bad weather. Delayed because of bad weather. I've been putting off working on my thesis because I'm never in the mood. Delaying. B. To put somebody off or put somebody off doing something means to make you dislike something or not want to do something. Have a look at the examples below. Don't let his humor put you off. He's a nice guy, actually. I don't want my fears put you off finding a job in another state. C. To put somebody off means to make someone wait because you do not want to meet them, talk to them, etc. until later. Have a look at the example over here. If my brother calls, put him off as long as possible. Make him wait as long as possible. D. To put somebody off something means to make it difficult for someone to pay attention to what they are doing by talking, making a noise, etc. Have a look at the example over here. It puts me off when you're listening to music while I'm talking. Meaning, it makes it difficult for me to pay attention while I'm talking. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use to carry on doing something or to carry on with something when you indicate that you continue doing something. Now, read the sentences below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate phrasal verb. Mary tries to eating healthy. How can you possibly Bill's attitude? It's so disrespectful. Mary tries to carry on eating healthy. How can you possibly carry on with Bill's attitude? It's so disrespectful. Also remember that we used to carry on when you continue moving, and we use to carry on something when you do or take part in a particular kind of work or activity. Now read the sentences below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate phrasal verb. There's nothing to see here. Lisa's friends planning a bridal shower. Carry on. There's nothing to see here. Lisa's friends are carrying on planning a bridal shower. Note that we use to put something off or to put off doing something when you delay doing something or arrange to do something at a later time or date. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate Phrasal verb. Why is Mr. Smith constantly the meeting? The board of directors won't like it. Why is Mr. Smith constantly putting off the meeting? The board of directors won't like it. Also note that we use to put somebody off or put somebody off doing something when somebody or something made you dislike something or not want to do something. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate phrasal verb. His indecisiveness really me. I don't feel like we can make any plans to meet up. His indecisiveness really puts me off. I don't feel like we can make any plans to meet up. Here is a short story using the phrasal verbs carry on and put off. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, 
make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Can you carry on a project together with Alice? I'd rather work alone. There's something about her that puts me off. What are you talking about? She's the nicest person I've ever met. Well, maybe this is exactly what puts me off. I can't carry on a conversation with her. She is constantly carrying on about random things. Sorry, but you have to carry on with it. We can't put off this whole project because of that. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with carry on or put off. You can change the form if necessary. A. Straight until you see a huge monument to your left. B. You should doing physical exercises. It can also improve your mood. C. We can't our trip. We've already booked everything. D. This music really me. I can't seem to concentrate. And now match the following sentences. A. It's so hard to carry on going to the gym. B. They can't put off their wedding just like that. C. Sorry that I interrupted you. One. Please carry on. Two, I always feel sore. Three, the guests are on their way. And now answer the following questions. A. Why can't some students carry on attending morning classes? B. Would you put off your vacation if you are asked to do some urgent work? C. What puts you off when you're talking to someone? And now let's check your answers. Carry straight on until you see a huge monument to your left. You should carry on doing physical exercises. It can also improve your mood. We can't put off our trip. We've already booked everything. This music really puts me off. I can't seem to concentrate. It's so hard to carry on going to the gym. I always feel sore. They can't put off their wedding just like that. The guests are on their way. Sorry that I interrupted you. Please carry on. Sample answers. Some students can't carry on attending morning classes because they like sleeping. No, I wouldn't put off my vacation if I were asked to do some urgent work. Inappropriate jokes put me off. Thank you. For watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the phrasal verbs turn down and break up. Let's get started. Remember that a phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition or both. Now typically their meaning is not obvious from the meanings of the individual words themselves. Now, to turn down has several meanings. Let's have a look at those meanings. A. To turn down means to turn the switch on a machine, for example, an oven, radio, etc., so that it produces less heat, sound, etc. It's the exact opposite to to turn up. Have a look at the examples below. Can you turn down the TV? I'm trying to study. Produce less sound. 
I'll turn down the heater. It's too hot in the room. Produce less heat. B. To turn down means to refuse an offer, request, or invitation. Have a look at the example over here. Anne offered Peter the job, but he turned it down, meaning that Peter refused the offer. C. To turn down means to refuse someone's offer of marriage. Have a look at the example over here. We were shocked to hear that Lily turned him down, meaning that Lily refused his offer of marriage. D. If the economy turns down, it means that the level of activity falls, companies become less profitable, etc. Have a look at the example over here. After the crisis in 2008, the economy has turned down. Now, to break up also has several meanings. Let's have a look at those meanings. A. To break up means to break into a lot of small pieces. Have a look at the example over here. The vase just broke up in my hands. B. To break up means to separate something into several smaller parts. For example, I think that their intention is to break up our company into several smaller ones. C. To break up means to stop a fight. For example, their mom was the one to break up fights, to stop the fight. D. To break up means to make people leave a place where they have been meeting or protesting. For example, police broke up the demonstration. E. To break up with. When speaking of marriage, group of people or relationship indicates that the people in this relationship separate or do not live or work together anymore. Have a look at the examples over here. I was so sad to hear that my favorite band broke up. Separated. James broke up with Kate last year. Separated. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we used to turn down when you turn the switch on a machine so that it produces less heat, sound, etc. Remember that we also used to turn down when you refuse an offer, request, or invitation. Now read the sentences below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate phrasal verb. Could you, the TV, please? I can't hear you. Sorry, but I have to, your invitation. I've been very busy lately. Could you, turn down the TV, please? I can't hear you. Sorry, but I have to turn down your invitation. I've been very busy lately. Also remember that we used to turn down when a person refused someone's offer of marriage. Now read the sentence below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate phrasal verb. Fred is a mess after Cindy, him, he had even bought a ring. Fred is a mess after Cindy turned him down. He had even bought a ring. And remember, you used to break up when you separate something into several smaller parts. Now read the sentence below and fill in the gaps using the appropriate phrasal verb. If there are too many students, they'll us into smaller groups. You can learn English when there are 50 people in one room. If there are too many students, they'll break us up into smaller groups. Also remember to use 
to break up with to indicate that people in this relationship separate or do not live or work together anymore. Now read the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate phrasal verb. It was a mutual decision too for Tim and Annie. They both have outgrown their relationship. It was a mutual decision to break up for Tim and Annie. Here is a short story using the phrasal verbs turn down and break up. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Have you heard the latest news? No. What's up? Sam and Alice broke up. What? No way. How did it happen? Apparently, Sam proposed to Alice in public and she turned him down. That's heartbreaking. I thought they were going to get married soon. They had been talking about that for months. I know. Their breakup is a sad news for everyone. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with turn down or break up. You can change the form if necessary. A. Emily, the offer because she didn't want to move to another state. B. Do you mind if I... the music? It's a bit distracting. C. I asked Julie for help, but she, me, I don't know what to do now. D. If the company, Todd will lose his job. And now, match the sentences below. A. I am afraid that we have to turn down your offer. B. Breaking news. C. I'm sorry. I must have broken it up. 1. The police is breaking up the people in front of the parliament building. 2. I'll get a new one. 3. It is not financially feasible for us right now. And now, answer the following questions. A. Do you turn down your friend's requests? B. Would you ask a stranger to turn down the music in his headphones? C. Do you believe that the majority of couples breaks up within a month? And now, let's check your answers. Emily turned down the offer because she didn't want to move to another state. Do you mind if I turn down the music? It's a bit distracting. I asked Julie for help, but she turned me down. I don't know what to do now. If the company breaks up, Todd will lose his job. I'm afraid that we have to turn down your offer. It's not financially feasible for us right now. Breaking news. The police is breaking up the people in front of the parliament building. I'm sorry. I must have broken it up. I'll get a new one. Sample answers. No. I don't turn down my friend's request. No, I wouldn't ask a stranger to turn down the music in his headphones. Yes, I believe that the majority of couples breaks up within a month. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Well, 
Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the predeterminers such, what, rather, and quiet. Let's get started. Now predeterminers are words placed before determiners in a sentence. In other words, they modify the determiner. Have a look at the example over here. What a great day. The word what is a predeterminer, and it's used to modify the determiner a. Now, predeterminers are usually placed before an indefinite article plus adjective plus noun to express an opinion about the noun they modify. Remember, the predeterminers can be classified into the following categories. A. Multipliers. For example, Twice, three times are used to express more than the specified amount. Have a look at the examples below. My brothers make twice my annual salary. I'll try to call my parents at least three times a week. B. Fractions. For example, half, one eighth are used to express a fraction of an amount. Have a look at the examples below. The bus will arrive in half an hour. We've got plenty of time. I ate one third of the pizza we cooked last night. C. Intensifiers. For example, such, what, quiet, rather, are used to express surprise, disappointment, pleasure, or other emotions. Now such and what are used to express surprise or other emotions. As in the example below, Alice is such a kind person. What a fantastic meal it is. Now quiet and rather refer to the degree of a particular quality. They can express disappointment, pleasure, or other emotions depending on the adjective. Have a look at the examples below. Actually, it was quite a nice meal. I am surprised. Now, quiet in this sentence is used to refer to the degree of the meal's quality. And in this sentence, he's always been rather a difficult child. Rather, is used in the sentence to refer to the degree of how difficult the child had always been. D. Other predeterminers such as all, both, do not fall into the other groups. Now they are used to express the entire amount. Have a look at the examples below. Jake broke both his legs when hiking. How did you manage to read all these books in one week? And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use multipliers, such as twice, three times to express more than the specified amount. Now, create a sentence using the words in the following bracket. Their meals twice the size of ours to be. Their meals are twice the size of ours. Also remember that we use fractions such as half, one-eighth to express a fraction of an amount. Now create a sentence using the words in the following bracket. Kim, a bottle of to drink wine half yesterday. Kim drank half a bottle of wine yesterday. Also remember that we use the intensifiers such and what to express surprise or other emotions. Now read the sentences below and fill in the gaps using such or what. It was a crazy adventure, a delightful evening. 
It was such a crazy adventure. What a delightful evening. And we use the intensifiers quiet and rather to refer to the degree of a particular quality. Now read the sentences below and fill in the gaps using quiet or rather. The food there is usually good. It was dull in there, so I decided to head home. The food there is usually quite good. It was rather dull in there, so I decided to head home. Note that we use other predeterminers such as all and both to express the entire amount. Now read the sentence below and fill in the gap using all or both. My friend threw a surprise B-Day party for me. All my friends threw a surprise B-Day party for me. Here is a short story using the predeterminers such, what, rather, and quiet. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Let me tell you about our trip to Germany. You know, that I'm quite good at German, but I felt rather hopeless at first. I couldn't understand anyone. Certainly, it did not help that we were in Bavaria. Yeah, I've heard stories about the accent there. What a challenge! And I would ask someone three times before understanding what they said. I felt quite stupid, but it got better with time. All people were very kind to us, in the end, we even managed to make friends with Adam and Martha from there. They are such a nice couple. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct predeterminer. A. When I was a kid, I would brush my teeth one time once a day. B. Both half my brothers live in Europe. C. What? Once a beautiful Sunday morning. D. I make all twice Tom's salary. E. I never want to see these two both again. And now, restore the word order in the following sentences. A. It such to be yesterday a roller coaster of emotions. B. Look these. A balloons all. C. Add of sugar one third to the mix a cup. D. I to see twice to try a year my dentist. E. It to be him in a state like this. Sad, rather to see. And now, let's check your answers. When I was a kid, I would brush my teeth once a day. Both my brothers live in Europe. What a beautiful Sunday morning. I make twice Tom's salary. I never want to see these two again. It was such a roller coaster of emotions yesterday. Look at all these balloons. 
Add one third a cup of sugar to the mix. I try to see my dentist twice a year. It's rather sad to see him in a state like this. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the order of adverbs. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Now, usually, adverbs modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Now, there are two adverbs in the sentence. Really and slowly. The adverb slowly modifies the verb walked, telling us how we walked. And the adverb really modifies the other adverb slowly, and it tells us how slowly we walked. As adverbs are used to modify verbs, adjectives, other adverbs, phrases, clauses, or even entire sentences, they are able to function nearly anywhere in the sentence, depending on their type and what it is they are modifying. Now, if we use more than one adverb to describe a verb, there is a general order in which the different categories of adverbs should appear, sometimes called the royal order of adverbs. First comes manner, second comes place, third frequency, fourth time, and fifth purpose. Now adverbs of manner tell us how something happens, how someone does something, or give character to a description. Have a look at the example over here. Alice sings beautifully. Now the adverb of manner beautifully in the sentence tells us how Alice sings. Adverbs of place tell us about an aspect of location associated with the action of a verb, specifying the direction, distance, movement, or position involved in the action. Have a look at the example over here. We looked upwards at the fireworks. Now the adverb of place, upwards, specifies the direction involved in the action, looked. Adverbs of frequency tell us how often something happens. Have a look at the example over here. Peter goes abroad twice a year. The adverb of frequency, twice a year, tell us how often Peter goes abroad. And adverbs of time tell us when or for how long something happens or is the case. Have a look at the example over here. They've been dating for four years. Adverbs of purpose tell us why something happens. Have a look at the example over here. The dress is handcrafted and hence expensive. Now the adverb of purpose, hence, in the sentence tell us why the dress is expensive. Now adverbs indicating the attitude and point of view of the speaker or writer usually go at the beginning as in the example over here. Actually, I don't want to go there. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that if we use more than one adverb to describe a verb, there is a general order in which the different categories of adverbs should appear. Now read the categories below and put them in the right order. First, Manner. Second, place. Third, 
frequency, fourth, time, and fifth, purpose. Now rearrange the sentence below following the word order of adverbs, manner, place, and frequency. Beth performs confidently all the time on the stage. Beth performs confidently on the stage all the time. Now rearrange the sentence below following the word order of adverbs, place, frequency, and purpose. Dan works three times a week because he is saving money for a trip at a diner. Dan works at a diner three times a week because he is saving money for a trip. And now, rearrange the sentence below following the word order of adverbs, manner, place, frequency, time, and purpose. My dad swims in the outdoor pool every day to stay in shape before sunset enthusiastically. My dad swims enthusiastically in the outdoor pool every day before sunset to stay in shape. Note that adverbs indicating the attitude and point of view of the speaker or writer usually go at the beginning of the sentence. Now create a sentence using the words in the following bracket. You, to keep, can't, obviously, a secret. Obviously, you can't keep a secret. Here is a short story following the order of adverbs. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. We hardly ever meet up. When are you free this weekend? Honestly, I don't know. We have a huge project at work and my boss wants everything to be perfect. So, as you can imagine, we are working overtime. Gosh, it doesn't sound great. Do you sleep eight hours a day at least? I usually sleep five hours a day. I also need to do some household chores to keep my place clean. I'll give you a call next week, okay? And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide which is an adverb or adverbial phrase of manner, place, frequency, time, or purpose. A. At 7 o'clock in the morning. B. To be more healthy. C. Annually. D. In the worst way possible. E. At the park. And now, restore the word order in the following sentences. A. My little brother, as he can't be with his friends, to like to go to school. B. The lady to me in to talk a friendly manner. C. Honestly, we can't afford I not to think a vacation abroad this year.
D. Sam to get up at weekends late usually. E. I at six o'clock to go every morning for a run. And now, let's check your answers. At 7 o'clock in the morning. Time. To be more healthy. Purpose. Annually. Frequency. In the worst possible way. Manner. At the park. Place. My little brother likes going to school as he can be with his friends. The lady. Talk to me in a friendly manner. Honestly, I don't think we can afford a vacation abroad this year. Sam usually gets up late at weekends. I go for a run every morning at 6 o'clock. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about pseudo conjunctions. Let's get started. Remember that conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, clauses, or sentences together. As in the example over here, Susan is an amazing wife and a wonderful mom. Now, pseudo-conjunctions are other parts of speech that act like conjunctions. Let's have a look at those pseudo-conjunctions. A. Adverbial conjunctions, which are also called conjunctive adverbs, are used to indicate a relationship between sentences and independent clauses by comparing or contrasting ideas. For example, consequently, finally, however, otherwise, then, etc. Remember that we usually use commas to separate an adverbial conjunction from the rest of the sentence. Have a look at the example over here. John's mom wanted him to go to college. Instead, he took a gap year and traveled around the world. Now the adverbial conjunction instead in the sentence is used to indicate the relationship between the first sentence and the second, contrasting what John's mom wanted him to do and what John actually did. B. Nominal conjunctions introduce or conclude ideas. For example, the moment, the instant, etc. Now, nominal conjunctions function as a noun in a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. I was petrified the moment I heard the news. The nominal conjunction, the moment, in this sentence is used to introduce the idea, I heard the news. C. Verbal conjunctions are used to introduce additional information in a sentence. Examples of verbal conjunctions are assuming that, given that, etc. Note that verbal conjunctions are derived from verbs. Have a look at the example over here. Shall we go out tonight, assuming that you are free? Now the verbal conjunction in this sentence, assuming that, is used to introduce additional information. You are free. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember, the pseudo-conjunctions are other parts of speech that act like conjunctions. Now read the list of words below and underline the pseudo-conjunctions. Either, or, and, every second. Nor, granted that, however, accordingly, but, instead, not only, but also, finally. Every second, granted that, however, 
accordingly, instead, finally. Now read the sentence below and use the pseudo conjunctions in brackets to expand the sentence. Moreover, Judy never skips classes at university. She works part time at the local cafe. Judy never skips classes at university. Moreover, she works part time at the local cafe. Every time, when I have a test coming up, I get really nervous. Every time I have a test coming up, I get really nervous. Given that, I don't think he'll agree. He quickly tried to change the topic. I don't think he'll agree, given that he quickly tried to change the topic. Here is a short story using pseudo conjunctions. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. It's too hot today. I'm melting. Given that you don't have an AC at your place, you'll be boiling soon. Indeed, I'm quite close to that. However, I'm trying to eat watermelons to stay cool. Does it help? Yeah. In fact, I'll be a watermelon myself soon. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline pseudo conjunctions. A. We can either go to the park or walk around the city. The weather is simply majestic. Two. Every time I see Mr. Baker enter the room, I want to hide behind my desk. C. He stopped responding to our messages, therefore destroying our friendship. D. Carol wants to move to California, but she doesn't have the necessary funds. E. I freeze in fear the instant I see a spider. F. I want to bake a carrot cake. It's quite simple. In addition, it's a healthy treat. G. I must say that hiking and camping are two passions of mine. I. Greg knew that he made a mistake. Indeed, the feeling of regret didn't leave him for a minute. J. Max told me that he wanted to speak with you. Furthermore, he seemed really impatient. Edge, I'd rather stay here than go home right now. And now, let's check your answers. No pseudo conjunction. Every time. Therefore. No pseudo conjunctions. The instant. In addition. No pseudo conjunction. Indeed. Furthermore, no pseudo conjunction. 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the passive versus the active voice. Let's get started. Now, in sentences written in the active voice, the subject performs the action. And in sentences written in the passive voice, the subject receives the action. Have a look at the example over here. I wrote a book. Now, this sentence is in the active voice. And note that the subject, I, performs the action, wrote a book. And in this sentence, that book was written by me. Now, this sentence is in the passive voice. And note that the subject, me, receives the action, was written. The passive form is made up of the verb to be and the past participle. Now, depending on the tense, note that the form of the verb to be can change. Have a look at the examples over here. The dinner is being cooked. Now, this sentence is in the present continuous. Being. The dinner was cooked. Past simple. Was. The dinner has been cooked. Present perfect. Has been. Now, the passive voice is usually used A to emphasize the action rather than the person or thing performing it. Have a look at the example over here. The decision has been made. B. To avoid mentioning the person or thing performing the action. Have a look at the example below. The rumors have been spreading at the office. Now, in this sentence, Either you know who spread the rumors or you are not sure who does that. C. To describe a situation where the subject is not important. Have a look at the example over here. Up to 7 billion trees are being cut down every year. D. To give instructions, set rules, etc. Have a look at the examples below. Smoking is prohibited. Anyone under the age of 18 is not allowed in any bar. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Read the following sentences and decide which tense is being used. This cute card was signed by my grandparents. Past simple. The work has been already completed. Present perfect. The tests will be evaluated in a week. Future simple. Now rewrite the sentences in the passive voice. They cancel the meeting. The meeting was cancelled. My friends and I are cooking dinner. The dinner is being cooked by us. I love Agatha Christie's stories. I love stories that are written by Agatha Christie. Here is a short story using the passive and active voice. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I came across an interesting study. It is said that 16 million people in the U.S. are diagnosed with clinical depression every year. Wow, the number is very high. Thankfully, it is possible to treat it effectively with medications, therapy, and proper mental support. Yeah, 
but more importantly, diagnosis should be made by a mental health professional. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and mark the ones that are in the active voice as A and the ones in the passive voice as P. A. I can't imagine him living alone. B. I can't see why his words were misinterpreted. C. We predict that Max is going to win this competition. D. The letter was delivered by airmail. E. It can't be concluded that the experiment was successful. F. When John was a kid, he was bitten by a dog. And now, write sentences in the passive voice using the phrases in brackets. A. To decorate a Christmas tree, children. B. To be said that women live longer than men. C. Macbeth, Shakespeare. D. To greet with a warm smile. And now, let's check your answers. Active voice, passive voice, active voice, passive voice, passive, passive voice. Sample answers. A Christmas tree was decorated by children. It is said that women live longer than men. Macbeth was written by Shakespeare. I was greeted with a warm smile. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about conditionals. Overview. Let's get started. Now, conditionals are sentences with two clauses, a main clause and an if clause. Note that conditionals state that the action in the main clause can only take place if a certain condition in the if clause is fulfilled. Have a look at the example over here. If we don't hurry, we will be late. Now, this is a conditional sentence, and it's used to talk about an action that can only take place being late if we do not hurry. Now, the order of the main and if clause is not fixed, although when the if clause precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma. Now, there are five types of conditionals in English. Let's have a look at those conditionals. A. Zero conditionals. Zero conditionals are used to describe things that are always or generally true. Thus, we refer to the real and possible situations, general truth, or scientific facts. Note that zero conditionals follow the pattern if plus present simple, present simple. Have a look at the example below. If the food is too spicy, drink milk. Now, this sentence refers to a general truth. B. Conditionals Type 1 or First Conditionals Now, these conditionals are used to describe future events that will happen or are likely to happen. Note that these sentences are based on facts, thus we make statements about the real world or particular situation. 
Remember, the first conditionals follow the pattern if plus present simple and future simple. Have a look at the example below. If everything goes according to plan, we'll be very rich. Now this sentence describes a future that is likely to happen. C. Conditionals type 2 or second conditionals. Now these conditionals are used to describe hypothetical, unlikely, or even impossible situations. These sentences are not based on facts, thus we can refer to any time. Note the second conditionals follow the pattern if plus past simple and would plus verb. Have a look at the example below. If I won the lottery, I would put the money in the bank. Now this sentence describes a situation or a future that is unlikely to happen. D. Conditionals type 3 or third conditionals. These conditionals are used to describe a past event that is different to what really happened. These sentences are solely hypothetical, thus there is always some implication of regret. Note, the third conditionals follow the pattern if plus past perfect and would have plus verb ed or the past participle. Have a look at the example below. If we hadn't slept in, we wouldn't have missed our flights. Now this sentence is used to describe a past event that is different from what really happened. And note that there is an implication of regret. E. Mixed conditionals. Now mixed conditionals refer to conditional sentences that combine two different types of conditional patterns. They are used to refer to a time in the past and a situation that is ongoing in the present. Remember, the mixed conditionals usually follow the pattern if plus past perfect and would plus verb. Have a look at the example below. If they had argued less, they would be a perfect couple. Note that there are two different types of conditional patterns in the sentence, and they are referring to a time in the past and a situation that is ongoing in the present. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Now follow the patterns and write down the sentences. Zero conditional, if plus present simple, present simple. When it to get to hot people not to feel well. When it gets too hot, people don't feel well. Type 1. If plus present simple, future simple. If we to go to the bar, I not to drink anything. If we go to the bar, I won't drink anything. Type 2. If plus past simple, would plus verb. If we to have more money, we to buy a new couch. If we had more money, we would buy a new couch. Type 3. If plus past perfect, would have plus verb ed or the past participle. If the Smiths to set up an alarm, they not to miss the flight. If the Smiths had set up an alarm, they wouldn't have missed the flight.
mixed type. If plus past perfect would plus verb. If Peter to play the piano every day, he to be rich and famous now. If Peter had played the piano every day, he would be rich and famous now. Here is a short story using conditionals. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done. Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? If I could live anywhere, I would move to Japan. I think this country is simply amazing, and it's very safe there. Well. If you learn Japanese, you can't move there. If I had studied at high school, I would be there already. It's a dream of mine to live there at some point. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the sentences below and decide which conditional is used. A. If you listen to me, you would remember the story. B. If I find your scarf in my place, I'll let you know. C. Kids love playing outside when it's summer. D. If my mom had come later, she wouldn't have noticed the mess. E. We would use public transport less often if we bought the car. And now, underline the correct word or phrase in the following sentence. A. What would we do if we missed missed our bus? B. He would have freaked out, would have freaked out if his wife had spent all his money on clothes. C. I would be surprised if he didn't know, didn't knew the answer. D. If you decide to go out with your friends tonight, let me know. Will you let me know in advance? E. I will be, would be a famous writer if I had started writing earlier. And now let's check your answers. Second conditional, first conditional, zero conditional, third conditional, second conditional. What would we do if we missed our bus? He would have freaked out if his wife had spent all his money on clothes. I would be surprised if he didn't know the answer. If you decide to go out with your friends tonight, let me know in advance. I would be a famous writer if I had started writing earlier. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about conditionals, the zero type. Let's get started. Now, conditionals are sentences with two clauses: a main clause and an if clause. Now, conditionals state that the action in the main clause can only take place if a certain condition in the if clause is fulfilled. Have a look at the example over here. If we don't hurry, we'll be late. Now, this is a conditional sentence, and it's used to state 
that the main action in the main clause, being late, will take place if we do not hurry. Now there are five main types of conditionals in English, and amongst them are zero conditionals. Now zero conditionals are used to describe things that are always or generally true. Thus, we refer to the real and possible situations, general truths, or scientific facts. Have a look at the example below. If two people fall in love, they become a couple. Now, in general, people become a couple if they fall in love with each other. Now, make sure to use the present simple tense in both parts of the zero conditionals. Note that the order of the main and if clause is not fixed, although when the if clause precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma. Have a look at the table below. The if clause includes if plus present simple and the main clause present simple. Have a look at the examples below. If the temperature is above zero degrees outside, the snow melts. General truth. If my friend invites me over, I always accept her invitation. General truth. Note that we can use when instead of if without any changes in the meaning, as in the example below. When winter comes, the birds fly to the south. Now, zero conditionals are often used to give instructions. In this case, we use the imperative in the main clause, as in the examples below. Call me if you need any help. If you are not satisfied with your major, change it. Now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that zero conditionals are used to describe things that are always or generally true. Thus, we refer to the real and possible situations, general truths, or scientific facts. Now read the sentences below and mark the main clause as M and the if clause as if. People close their eyes when they get scared. Main clause, if clause. Pupils can be expelled if they don't respect school rules. Main clause, if clause. If you want to buy something sweet, go to the supermarket. If clause, main clause. Also remember that we use the present simple tense in both parts of the zero conditionals. Now create a sentence using the words in the bracket. When people to throw away plastic bottles, we to pollute our planet. When people throw away plastic bottles, we pollute our planet. If it to be late, not to go home alone. If it is late, don't go home alone. Here is a short story using the zero conditional. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. If Josh calls me, tell him I'm busy. But what if he calls again? Tell him I'm still busy. Why are you ignoring him? Well, if someone ignores me for a week, I do the same. I know that it's petty, but I'm really annoyed. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and find mistakes. A. If you not want to go, just let me know.
B. You get green if you mix yellow and blue. C. When people cry, if they feel better afterwards. D. If we don't cook anything at home, we eat when at the cafe nearby. E. When parents will spend a lot of time with their kids, it helps them to build a strong bond. F. You can't call anyone if you don't have money on your phone. G. My friend always send me funny pictures when he is at work. Now, write two sentences with zero conditionals and one zero conditional with imperative. And now, let's check your answers. If you don't want to go, just let me know. You get green if you mix yellow and blue. When people cry, they feel better afterwards. If you don't cook anything at home, we eat at the cafe nearby. When parents spend a lot of time with their kids, it helps them to build a strong bond. You can't call anyone if you don't have money on your phone. My friend always sends me funny pictures when he is at work. Sample answers. The chocolate melts if you hold it in your hands. People use umbrellas when it rains. Let me know when you finish cooking. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the type 1 conditionals. Let's get started. Remember that conditionals are sentences with two clauses, a main clause and an if clause. Now conditionals state that the action in the main clause can only take place if a certain condition in the if clause is fulfilled. Have a look at the example over here. If we don't hurry, we'll be late. Now this is a conditional sentence and is used to state that the action in the main clause, being late, will take place if we don't hurry. Now there are five types of conditionals in English and among them are conditionals type 1 or first conditionals. Now, conditionals type 1 or first conditionals are used to describe future events that will happen or are likely to happen. Now, these sentences are based on facts. Thus, we make statements about the real world or particular situation. Have a look at the example below. If you don't study, you will fail the exam. Now, sometimes you can pass an exam without studying, but this time it won't work. Use the present simple tense in the if clause and the future simple tense in the main clause. Note that the order of the main and if clause is not fixed, although when the if clause precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma. Have a look at the table below. The if clause of conditional type 1 or the first conditional includes if plus present simple. In the main clause, future simple. Have a look at the examples below. If the weather is great, we'll go to the park. If you don't stop fighting with each other, you two will be grounded. Likely to happen in the future. Note that it is possible to use other present tenses. For example, 
present continuous, present perfect in the if clause. Have a look at the example below. If you're going, I'll go too. Now this is if plus present continuous future simple. And in this sentence, if they've already received your information, they will let you know. If plus present perfect future simple. Note that first conditionals can be used to give instructions in some particular situation. Have a look at the example over here. If you carry all these bottles at once, you'll drop them. It's too dangerous. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember the zero conditionals are used to describe things that are always or generally true. And first conditionals are used to describe future events that will happen or are likely to happen. Now read the sentences below and mark zero conditionals as ZC and first conditionals as FC. If there is milk left in the fridge, I'll bake some pancakes. First conditional. If people feel sleepy, they go to bed or drink coffee. Zero conditional. What will we do if they notice us? Future conditional. Also remember that we use the present simple tense in the if clause and the future simple tense in the main clause. Now create a sentence using the words in the following bracket. If anyone to break in the police to be here in five minutes. If anyone breaks in, the police will be here in five minutes. I to stop by if I to get off from work earlier today. I'll stop by if I get off from work earlier today. Here is a short story using type 1 conditionals. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. My parents are just too much sometimes. They constantly tell me that if I don't study, I won't pass the exams. If I don't eat healthy, I'll have health problems later in life. If I don't go out more, I won't have friends. Gosh, that's depressing. I can't see where they're coming from, though. They're just worried, I suppose. It'd be better if they were less straightforward. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct word or phrase. A. If they want, wanted to go with us, they will give us a call. B. Maya will be furious if Beth will forget, forget about their plans again. C. If RV were late for class today, Mrs. Smith will be very angry. D. What we will do, will we do if we miss our train? E. We'll just, will find, find a local supermarket if we get hungry. F. If you will make, make a mess, you'll clean it up. G. Don't worry. No one will judge you if what you say, no. And now, write two sentences with first conditionals and one first conditional with the instruction.
Now let's check your answers. If they want to come with us, they'll give us a call. Maya will be furious if Beth forgets about their plans again. If we're late for class today, Mrs. Smith would be really angry. What will we do if we miss our train? We'll just find a local supermarket if we get hungry. If you make a mess, you'll clean it up. Don't worry, no one will judge you if you say no. Sample answers. The chocolate melts if you hold it in your hands. People use umbrellas when it rains. Let me know when you finish cooking. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the type 2 conditionals. Let's get started. Remember that conditionals are sentences with two clauses, a main clause and an if clause. Now conditionals state that the action in the main clause can only take place if a certain condition in the if clause is fulfilled. Have a look at the example over here. If we don't hurry, we will be late. Now this is a conditional sentence and it's used to state that the action in the main clause, being late, will take place if we don't hurry. Now there are five main types of conditionals in English and amongst them are conditional type 2 or second conditionals. Now, conditionals type 2 or second conditionals are used to describe hypothetical, unlikely, or even impossible situations. These sentences are not based on facts, thus we can refer to any time. Have a look at the example below. If Peter cleaned his place, he would let us come in. Now make sure to use the past simple tense in the if clause and would plus the base form of the verb in the main clause. Note that the order of the main and if clause is not fixed, although when the if clause precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma. Have a look at the table below. Now the if clause of the type 2 conditionals or the second conditionals is formed by using if plus past simple and the main clause would plus verb. Have a look at the examples below. If I won one million dollars, I would give it to charity. An event in the future that's unlikely to happen. If you found a formal black dress, it would look perfect on you. Unlikely to happen. Note that if we use the verb to be in the if clause, the form were is used even with the first and third person. Now we often use if I were you to express our opinion or to give advice. Have a look at the examples below. If I were a chef, I would work at some Italian restaurant. Expressing opinion. If I were you, I wouldn't take that job. Giving advice. Now compare the first conditional and the second conditional. Have a look at the examples below. If it snows today, we will definitely make a snowman. Now this sentence is in the first conditional because it is December right now and it's highly likely for it to snow. And in this sentence, if it's known today, we would be surprised. Now this is in the second conditional, because it is May right now, and it's almost impossible for it to snow. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that second conditionals are used to describe hypothetical, unlikely, or even impossible situations. Now read the sentences below and mark first conditionals as FC and second conditionals as SC. If I've seen it earlier, I'll let you know. 
for its conditional. If I were you, I would go on a trip with us. Second conditional. If he cheated, she would dump him at once. Second conditional. Also remember to use the past simple tense in the if clause and would plus the base form of the verb in the main clause. Now create a sentence using the words in the following bracket. What your dog to say if it can't to speak. What would your dog say if it could speak? What you to buy if you to have only ten dollars? What would you buy if you had only ten dollars? Here is a short story using type two conditionals. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. If I knew what to do, it would help me a lot. If I were you, I would just listen to my guts. If I listened to my inner voice, I would certainly make a stupid decision in this situation. I make stupid decisions when I'm stressed. At least it would be your own decision. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Match the following sentences. A. I don't have an umbrella, so if it rained. B. If I won a lottery, C. If we had more money. D. If I were you. E. What would you do? F. If they didn't like each other. G. Terry would be a bodybuilder. 1. We would buy a bigger house. 2. If you saw a kitten at your entrance door. 3. I would get wet. 4. I would buy these shoes. 5. If he worked out more. 6. I would travel around the world. 7. They wouldn't be friends. And now, write three sentences with second conditionals. And now, let's check your answers. I don't have an umbrella, so if it rained, I would get wet. If I won a lottery, I would travel around the world. If we had more money, we would buy a bigger house. If I were you, I would buy these shoes. What would you do if you saw a kitten at your entrance door? If they didn't like each other, they wouldn't be friends. Terry would be a bodybuilder if he worked out more. Sample answers. Where would you be if you could live anywhere in the world? If I were you, I would ask him out. If there were more shops nearby, I wouldn't have to spend 30 minutes on a drive. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Type 3 conditionals. Let's get started. Remember that conditionals are sentences with two clauses, a main clause and an if clause. Now conditionals state that the action in the main clause can only take place if a certain condition in the if clause is fulfilled. Have a look at the example over here. If we don't hurry, 
we will be late. Now this is a conditional sentence and it's used to state that the action in the main clause, being late, will take place if we don't hurry. Now there are five main types of conditionals in English and amongst them are conditionals type 3 or third conditionals. Now conditionals type 3 or third conditionals are used to describe a past event that is different to what really happened. Note that these sentences are solely hypothetical. Thus, there's always some implication of regret. Have a look at the example below. If we hadn't booked this trip, we wouldn't have missed her graduation ceremony. Meaning that we wanted to be at her graduation ceremony, but we missed it because we were on a trip somewhere else. Now make sure to use the past perfect tense in the if clause and would have plus the past participle in the main clause. Note that the order of the main and if clause is not fixed, although when the if clause precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma. Have a look at the table below. Now the if clause of type 3 conditionals is formed by if plus past perfect. Main clause would have plus verb ed or the past participle. Have a look at the examples below. If we had bought that lottery ticket, we would have won. If Jake hadn't drunk that night, he wouldn't have got into the car accident. Note that both would and had can be contracted to apostrophe D. Remember, that would never appears in the if clause. Have a look at the example over here. If I had known that, I would have warned you. This would be equal to if I'd known that, I'd have warned you. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that third conditionals are used to describe a past event that is different to what really happened. Now read the following sentences and mark second conditionals as SC and third conditionals as TC. If I'd known, I wouldn't have done it. Third conditional. They wouldn't have missed the bus if they had left earlier. Third conditional. If Sam had more free time, he would be happier. Second conditional. Also remember that third conditionals are solely hypothetical. Thus, there is always some implication of regret. Now rewrite the following sentences so that their meanings stay the same. I could call Kelly that time. I know that she would help me. If I had called Kelly, she would have helped me. I really wanted to go to the party, but I had too much homework. If I had finished my homework, I would have gone to the party. Here is a short story using the type 3 conditionals. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Would you have come to the party if you had known that Meredith was there? I definitely wouldn't have come to your party if I had known she was there. I'm glad that I saw her standing somewhere in the crowd right when I entered your place and had a chance to avoid the greeting part. If I had known you two weren't on good terms, I wouldn't have invited her. It's already in the past. Don't worry about it. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Matt 
the following sentences. A. If Emma would have been more attentive. B. If there had been Wi-Fi. C. Eric would have lost the fight. D. If I had been better at time management. E. If Pam had written a shopping list. F. If you had called me last week. G. If your team would have scored more goals. 1. We wouldn't have been lost. 2. I wouldn't have been staying up late working on my thesis. 3. We would have won the cup. 4. You would have known the news. 5. She wouldn't have failed the class. 6. She wouldn't have forgotten to buy tea. 7. If he hadn't worked out every single day. And now, write three sentences with third conditionals. Now let's check your answers. If Emma would have been more attentive, she wouldn't have failed the class. If there had been Wi-Fi, we wouldn't have been lost. Eric would have lost the fight if he hadn't worked out every single day. If I had been better at time management, I wouldn't have been staying up late working on my thesis. If Pam had written a shopping list, she wouldn't have forgotten to buy tea. If you had called me last week, you would have known the news. If your team would have scored more goals, we would have won the cup. Sample answers. If you hadn't woken me up, I would have been late. If we had arrived earlier, we wouldn't have missed the plane. If Susan hadn't drunk last night, she wouldn't have been hungover. Thank you for watching this tutorial. To form the if clause of mixed conditionals, we use if plus past perfect and the main clause would plus verb. Have a look at the examples below. If Kate had studied more, she would have a better GPA. If he had started painting the picture in June, it would be finished now. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about mixed conditionals. Let's get started. Remember that conditionals are sentences with two clauses, a main clause and an if clause. Now, conditionals state that the action in the main clause can only take place if a certain condition in the if clause is fulfilled. Have a look at the example over here. If we don't hurry, we will be late. Now, this is a conditional sentence, and it's used to state that the action in the main clause, being late, will take place if we don't hurry. Now, there are five main types of conditionals in English, and amongst them are mixed conditionals. Now, mixed conditionals refer to conditional sentences that combine two different types of conditional patterns. The mixed conditional is used to refer to a time in the past and a situation that is ongoing in the present. Have a look at the example below. If I had won the lottery, I would buy a huge house. Now this means that I didn't win the lottery in the past and I'm living in a small apartment right now. Now the most common mixed conditional is when we have a third conditional in the if clause, if plus past perfect, followed by a second conditional, would plus the base form of the verb in the main clause. Note that the order of the main and if clause is now fixed, although when the if clause 
precedes the main one, make sure to use a comma. Now the less common mixed conditional is when we have a second conditional in the if clause. If plus past simple followed by a third conditional would have plus past participle in the main clause. Now this conditional refers to an unreal present situation and it's possible but unreal past result. Have a look at the example below. If I weren't afraid of flying, I would have traveled by air, meaning that I am afraid of flying in general, and that time I traveled by train. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember, the mixed conditionals refer to conditional sentences that combine two different types of conditional patterns. Now read the sentences below and mark the mixed conditionals as MC. If you don't let it out now, you'll get more frustrated. If it snowed today, I would make a snowman. I would play the guitar if I had gone to music school. I would play the guitar if I had gone to music school is the only mixed conditional. Also remember that the most common mixed conditional is when we have a third conditional in the if clause. If plus past perfect followed by a second conditional would plus the base form of the verb in the main clause. Now finish the sentences below so that their meaning stays the same. I'm not outgoing so I didn't party every week. If I were more... If I were more outgoing, I would have partied every week. I was invited to their dinner party so I didn't stay at home all day. If I weren't, if I weren't invited to their dinner party, I would have stayed at home all day. Here is a short story using mixed conditionals. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. This is kind of upsetting. I know that if I had studied more, I would pass the exam successfully and chose another major. If you feel like you have enough motivation, you can still try. It's never too late to start, right? Yeah, but if I had submitted the documents this summer, I would be able to start studying this month. I guess I have to wait now and study more. And now, it's time to practice on your own. Match the following sentences. A. If we had talked more. B. Patricia would have baked something. C. If my parents had argued less. D. I would be in Greece now. E. If I wasn't afraid of insects. F. I would go on a date with Kate. G. Mike wouldn't have walked to work. 1. They still would be together. 2. I would have gone camping. 3. We would be close friends. 4. If I had asked her number. 5. If I had booked the flights. 6. If he had a car. 7. If she liked sweet things. And now, write three sentences with mixed conditionals.
Now let's check your answers. If we had talked more, we would be close friends. Patricia would have baked something if she liked sweet things. If my parents had argued less, they would still be together. I would be in Greece now if I had booked the flights. If I wasn't afraid of insects, I would have gone camping. I would go on a date with Kate if I had asked her number. Mike wouldn't have walked to work if he had a car. Sample answers. If I had submitted my homework on time, I would be free now. She would be happier if she had gone to therapy. If he had gone to college, he might have a better job. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to have an overview of clauses. Let's get started. Now, a clause is a combination of words containing a subject and a predicate. Have a look at the examples over here. Peter goes to the gym. Now, this is one clause. Peter goes to the gym after he finishes his work. Now, there are two clauses in the sentence. Peter goes to the gym and he finishes his work. There are two types of clauses in English. A. An independent or main clause. Now, an independent or main clause contains a subject and a predicate and expresses a finished thought. Thus, it can stand alone in a sentence. Have a look at the examples below. Pam likes drawing and painting. Expresses a finished thought. Andy is currently unemployed. Expresses a finished thought. And both sentences have a subject and a predicate. Note that the independent clause is a simple sentence when dependent clauses within one sentence are absent. B. A dependent or subordinate clause. A dependent or subordinate clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Thus, it cannot stand alone as a separate sentence. Have a look at the examples below. Mr. Clarkson, whose works are critically acclaimed, has published a new book. Now this clause, whose works are critically acclaimed, is a dependent or subordinate clause, and it gives us additional information about Mr. Clarkson. Mary started laughing when she saw a pug wearing a costume. Now when she saw a pug wearing a costume, it's a dependent or subordinate clause, and it gives us a bit more details about why she started laughing. Now, an independent clause forms a complex sentence together with a dependent clause. Have a look at the examples below. I'd like to know why I can't book a room at this hotel. The woman stood crying as people were passing by. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that an independent clause contains a subject and a predicate and expresses a finished thought. And a dependent clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Now read the sentences below and underline the dependent clauses. Since you refuse to come with me, I'll go alone. Since you refuse to come with me. The weather is wonderful. Everyone is outside. No dependent clause. John's grandpa, whose kind words were like a guiding light, passed away. Whose kind words were like a guiding light. Now rewrite the sentences below so that there is 
an independent and a dependent clause. I don't want to go outside. It's raining. I don't want to go outside because it's raining. Finish your work and call me. Call me after you finish your work. Here is a short story using clauses. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Have you decided where you'd like to go this summer? I haven't asked my family if they plan on doing a huge family gathering. Well, until you get the details, we can't book anything. I understand that. I promise that I'll call my parents today. You can't join us. Everyone is super friendly. I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet your huge family yet. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and mark independent clauses as I and dependent ones as D. A. Students have to finish their assignments by 6 p.m. B. The cafe that is located across the street serves the best coffee. C. She doesn't like the men who smoke. D. I doubt that it'll rain tomorrow. E. Nick's aunt, who speaks five languages, lives in Spain. F. Apple pies that don't have a lot of apples in them are not worth my attention. G. My mom wants to go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower. H. I will keep on fighting until I reach my goals. I. I'd rather stay at home tonight. The weather is depressing. J. The teacher was asking questions but no one answered. And now, let's check your answers. Students have to finish their assignments by 6 p.m. Independent clause. The cafe that is located across the street, dependent clause, serves the best coffee, independent clause. She doesn't like the men, independent clause, who smoke, dependent clause. I doubt, independent, that it'll rain tomorrow, dependent. Nick's mom, who speaks five languages, dependent clause, lives in Spain, independent. Apple pies that don't have a lot of apples in them, dependent clause, are not worth my attention, independent. My mom wants to go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower, independent clause. I will keep on fighting, independent clause, until I reach my goals, dependent clause. I'd rather stay at home tonight, independent. The weather is depressing, independent. The teacher was asking questions. Independent clause, but no one answered. Dependent clause. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about independent clause. Let's get started. Now, an independent or main clause contains a subject and a predicate and expresses a finished thought. Thus, it can stand alone as a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. 
Sarah wants to study Spanish. Now this is an independent or main clause, and notes that it contains a subject and a predicate, and it expresses a finished thought. Also note that this sentence can stand alone. The independent clause is a simple sentence when dependent clauses within one sentence are absent. Have a look at the examples below. I don't want to go to the pub tonight. Now this is a simple sentence. I have to work tomorrow. This is also a simple sentence. An independent clause. Now the independent clause forms a complex sentence together with a dependent clause. Now in this case, make sure to use a conjunction. Have a look at the example below. I don't want to go to the pub tonight because I have to work tomorrow. Now this is a complex sentence consisting of an independent clause and a dependent one. Now the two clauses are connected with the help of a conjunction because. Also note that two independent clauses can form a sentence. Now in this case, make sure to use a semicolon. Have a look at the examples below. My little sister doesn't like reading. She falls asleep within two minutes. Now these are two independent clauses connected with a semicolon. Lucy has a business trip in a week. Lucy's mom will help with the kids. Again, two independent clauses connected with a semicolon. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that the independent clause forms a complex sentence together with a dependent clause. Now read the sentences below and underline the independent clauses. Finish your work today so that you have a day to yourself tomorrow. Finish your work today. I doubt that I'll go to the gym today. I doubt. Even though they lived in different countries, they found a way to be together. They found a way to be together. Also remember that two independent clauses can form a sentence. Now, in this case, make sure to use a semicolon. Now read the sentences below and decide whether it is possible to rewrite the given sentence in this way. I couldn't understand where they wanted to go. Not possible. It felt weird being there as I didn't know anyone. Possible. It felt weird being there, semicolon, I didn't know anyone. Here is a short story using independent clauses. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Why can't I have a sleepover? Mom, you promised me that I could invite my friends over this week. I'm sorry, honey, but let's do it some other time. Our grandma is staying with us. It would be too noisy. But mom, you promised me. I'm very sorry, sweetheart. Let's do it next Friday, okay? And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the independent clauses. A. She walked as if she were on a runway. B. I don't like the idea of buying a motorbike as it is extremely dangerous and you are likely to get injured.
C. We don't sell coffee here. D. When she heard the news, Maya burst into tears. E. George will probably decline our invitation. He's been busy at work. F. Although it seemed impossible, Kate got a full scholarship. G. She wouldn't have succeeded if it weren't for her parents. And now, rewrite the following sentences so that each clause is independent. A. Peter wanted to study abroad as he liked the idea of working in an international team. B. She couldn't answer the question since she wasn't even listening. C. I didn't want to go to the supermarket because it was raining. And now, let's check your answers. She walked. I don't like the idea of buying a motorbike. We don't sell coffee here. Maya burst into tears. George will probably decline our invitation. He's been really busy at work. Kate got a full scholarship. She wouldn't have succeeded. Sample answers. Peter wanted to study abroad. He liked the idea of working in an international team. She couldn't answer the question. She wasn't even listening. I didn't want to go to the supermarket. It was raining. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about dependent clause. Let's get started. A dependent or a subordinate clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Thus, it cannot stand alone as a separate sentence. Have a look at the example over here. When she comes back home after a long day at work, she likes to take a bath. Now the dependent or the subordinate clause in the sentence is when she comes back home after a long day at work. And note that it is used to give us additional information about the main sentence. She likes to take a bath. Now, dependent clauses can be divided into the following categories. A. A noun clause. A noun clause is a dependent clause that acts as a noun. Thus, it can be a subject, an object, or an object of a preposition in a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. Whoever comes first wins. Now, the noun clause in this sentence is whoever comes first, and note that it acts as the subject of the sentence. And in this sentence, we don't know who left the note at the door. The noun clause who left the note at the door acts as the object of the sentence. B. An adjective clause. An adjective clause is a dependent clause that modifies nouns or pronouns, providing additional information. Have a look at the examples below. A woman who can cook well will become my wife. The adjective clause in the sentence, who can cook well, modifies or gives us additional information about the noun woman. Broccoli which not everyone likes, are part of my daily ratio. The adjective clause, which not everyone likes, is used to modify or give us additional information about the noun 
broccoli. C. An adverb clause. An adverb clause is a dependent clause that modifies an adjective, an adverb, or a verb or verb phrase. Have a look at the examples below. We were swimming in the ocean when we saw the lightning. Modifying the verb swimming. Let's eat dinner before the food gets cold. Modifying the verb phrase. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that a dependent or a subordinate clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Thus, it cannot stand alone as a separate sentence. Now read the sentences below and underline the dependent clauses. As long as you are honest with me, we can be together. As long as you are honest with me. Sarah loves going to her grandma, whose pies are the best thing in the world. Whose pies are the best thing in the world? I didn't want to go home. It was cold and empty. No dependent clauses. And now read the sentences below and mark a noun clause as N, an adjective clause as ADG, and an adverb clause as ADV. No matter what we do, the outcome remains the same. Adjective clause. You can be whomever you want. Noun clause. Julie, who works in HR, is a good friend of mine. Adjective clause. Here is a short story using dependent or subordinate clauses. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Seth Rogen, whose humor I absolutely adore, is filming a new movie. Oh, really? What's the title? Clear Sky, if I'm not mistaken. If everything goes well, it should be out in 2019. It's cool that we never argue about what movies to watch together. Yeah, we have the same taste when it comes to art. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the dependent clauses. Also decide whether they are noun, adjective, or adverb clauses. A. The art classes that Philip attended weren't very good. B. My parents are always talking about how they can start their own business. C. She is much taller than her sisters. D. Ashley, who has been my friend for a year, is moving to Italy. E. Macon couldn't help but try after she heard the news. F. The painting that was stolen from the gallery has been found. G. What we were talking about with Madison is none of your business. H. I didn't like the book you gave me. I, when you finish your work, give me a call. G, 
Jay, no one could explain what happened at Gabby's birthday party. And now, let's check your answers. That Philip attended. Adjective clause. How they can start their own business. Noun clause. Then her sister. Adverb clause. Who has been my friend for a year. Adjective clause. After she heard the news. Adverb clause. That was stolen from the gallery. Adjective clause. What we were talking about with Madison. Noun clause. That you gave me. Adjective clause. When you finish your work. Adverb clause. What happened at Gabby's birthday party? Noun clause. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about noun clause. Let's get started. Remember that a dependent or a subordinate clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Thus, it cannot stand alone as a separate sentence. Have a look at the example over here. When she comes back home after a long day at work, she likes to take a bath. Now the dependent or the subordinate clause in the sentence is when she comes back home after a long day at work. And note that it's used to give us additional information about the main sentence. She likes to take a bath. Now, a noun clause is a dependent clause that acts as a noun. Have a look at the example below. She loves violet. Now, violet is a noun. But in this sentence, I know that she loves violet. This is a noun clause. A noun clause can begin with words such as what, who, when, where, whether, which, why, how, etc. Have a look at the examples below. I don't know who called me. It's important to state in your application why you want to work at the company. Now, a noun clause can act as a subject, an object, or an object of a preposition. Have a look at the examples below. Why he did this was beyond my understanding. Now, the noun clause, why he did this in the sentence, acts as the subject of the sentence. And in this sentence, we would like to know whether you see yourself coming back to our resort next year. The noun clause, whether you see yourself coming back to our resort next year, acts as the object of the sentence. She told us about how she managed to get her intern position. The noun clause in the sentence, how she managed to get her intern position, acts as the object of a preposition. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that a noun clause is a dependent clause that acts as a noun. Now read the sentences below and fill in the gaps with what, where, or who. The police were trying to find out was standing behind the recent crime. Who was standing behind the recent crime? He made this money never cross my mind. Where he made this money never cross my mind. Everyone wants to know helps people become successful. What helps people become successful? Also remember that a noun clause can act as subject, an object, or an object of a preposition. 
Now read the sentences below and underline the noun clauses. When I was a kid, I wanted to know where unicorns live. Where unicorns live. Joey never explained why he moved abroad. Why he moved abroad. Here is a short story using noun clauses. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I wish I could grow up faster. Why? Well, I could do whatever I wanted. I could be wherever I wanted. No one would ask me why I did something. Did you have a fight with your parents? No, I mean, sort of. They didn't like that I came home past midnight. Of course they didn't like it. And I guess you didn't even call them saying that you'll be that late. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the noun clauses. A. It was very noisy. David couldn't hear what his wife was saying. B. Let me know what I can do for you. C. We are what we eat. D. Sarah didn't tell us how long she plans on staying in London. E. Whichever place you pick is fine. I really don't have a preference. F. We wanted to know what was the cheapest way to get to Boston. G. He is always doing whatever he wants. And now, write three sentences with noun clauses. Now let's check your answers. What his wife was saying. What I can do for you. What we eat. How long she plans on staying in London. Whichever place you pick. What was the cheapest way to get to Boston. Whatever he wants. Sample answers. Whoever written this needs to be reported to the police. I couldn't explain why I wanted to eat strawberries with honey. What my mom likes doing the most is working in the garden. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adjective clause. Let's get started. Remember that a dependent or a subordinate clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Thus, it cannot stand alone as a separate sentence. Have a look at the example over here. When she comes back home after a long day at work, she likes to take a bath. Now the dependent or the subordinate clause in the sentence is when she comes back home after a long day at work. And it's used to give us additional information about the main sentence. She likes to take a bath. An adjective clause is a dependent clause that modifies nouns or pronouns, providing additional information. Have a look at the example over here. The house where we were born was demolished last month. Now the adjective clause in the sentence where we were born modifies the noun house. An adjective clause can begin with words such as that, who, whom, whose, 
which, when, where, and why. Have a look at the example below. Children whose parents spend a lot of time with them are bound to be happier. Now there are two types of adjective clauses. Let's have a look at those types. A. A restrictive or essential adjective clause. Now a restrictive or essential adjective clause provides information that is necessary to distinguish the modified word. Thus, it cannot be omitted. Now these clauses usually begin with that and are not set off with commas. Have a look at the example over here. The English course that Anne takes is aimed at writing skills. Now there are different types of English courses, but the peculiarity of the course that Anne takes is that it is aimed at writing skills. B. A non-restrictive or non-essential adjective clause. Now, a non-restrictive or non-essential adjective clause provides additional information. Thus, it can be omitted without any loss of meaning. Now, these clauses usually begin with which and are always set off with commas. Have a look at the example below. Bananas, which I eat daily, are packed with nutrients and vitamins meaning that bananas are very healthy. By the way, I eat them every day. Now, this additional information doesn't change the fact that bananas are healthy. And now, let's review and practice a bit. Remember that an adjective clause is a dependent clause that modifies nouns or pronouns, providing additional information. Now read the sentences below and underline adjective clauses. I am a big fan of Quentin Tarantino, whose movies are always incredible. Whose movies are always incredible. Jim needed to know how to move forward. No adjective clause. My grandpa loves telling the story when he joined the army. When he joined the army. And now, read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with who, that, or which. Apples are perfect for pies, are sold at any supermarket. Apples, which are perfect for pies, are sold at any supermarket. Those never gossip behind your back are true friends. Those who never gossip behind your back are true friends. The book was on the table, looked rather old. The book that was on the table looked rather old. Here is a short story using adjective clauses. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. The gym where I spend most of my free time is closing down in three weeks. Do you know any other cheap faculty like that nearby? Gyms, which are almost everywhere nowadays, aren't that expensive. I'd recommend looking for one online though. I, I go to the gym that is located in my office building, so I've never really researched any other options. Yeah, I'd like to find a place where additional classes are offered. Maybe yoga or aerobics. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline adjective clauses. A. That time when we got lost, I got really scared. B. The reason why Ollie quit his job seemed made up. 
C. Anything that is grown organically is quite expensive. D. I wouldn't trust a hairdresser whose hairstyle is not stylish. E. My parents love talking about the days when there was no internet. F. Our company needs someone who has five years of experience in this field. And now, write two sentences with restrictive clauses and two sentences with non-restrictive ones. And now, let's check your answers. When we got lost. Why Ollie quit his job that is grown organically, whose hairstyle is not stylish, when there was no internet, who has five years of experience in this field. Sample answers. This is the reason why Peter didn't show up. Do you remember my birthday when we spent the whole night celebrating outside? Emma, who is Mike's sister, will go to the concert with us. Vegetables, which kids don't really like, are vital for us. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adverb clause. Let's get started. Remember that a dependent or a subordinate clause gives additional information to the main sentence. Thus, it cannot stand alone as a separate sentence. Have a look at the example over here. When she comes back home after a long day at work, she likes to take a bath. Now the dependent or the subordinate clause is when she comes back home after a long day at work and it's used to give us additional information about the main sentence. She likes to take a bath. Now an adverb clause is a dependent clause that modifies an adjective, an adverb, or a verb or verb phrase, providing additional information. Have a look at the example below. Give me a call when you get home. Now the adverb clause in the sentence, when you get home, modifies the verb phrase, give me a call. Note that an adverb clause can begin with words such as after, because, since, until, when, etc. It's in the examples below. We were at the beach when it started raining. Mike is running every day as he is going to run a marathon in a month. Now, an adverb clause can be placed at the beginning and at the end of the sentence without a change in meaning. Now make sure to use a comma if the clause is placed at the beginning of the sentence. Have a look at the examples below. You should brush your teeth before you go to bed. Before you go to bed, you should brush your teeth. There is no change in meaning, but the adverb clause in the first sentence is placed at the end. And in the second sentence, the adverb clause is placed at the beginning and a comma is used. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that an adverb clause is a dependent clause that modifies an adjective, an adverb, or a verb or verb phrase, providing additional information. Now read the sentences below and underline adverb clauses. Even though I didn't have anything planned, I didn't want to go out. Even though I didn't have anything planned. Carla 
has been acting strange since she returned from the trip. Since she returned from the trip. James couldn't believe Kate did this because he loved her. Because he loved her. Now read the sentences below and fill in the gaps with so that, although, or as soon as. He entered the room. He was welcomed with hugs. As soon as he entered the room, he was welcomed with hugs. I want to book the tickets right now. We don't have to do it last minute. So that we don't have to do it last minute. They lost the game. The team didn't lose the fighting spirit. Although they lost the game, the team didn't lose the fighting spirit. Here is a short story using adverb clauses. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. What do you want to do after you finish your studies? I don't really know yet. Until I find a job, I want to work on my English skills so that I can find a job abroad. But before I apply, I need to find a local internship. You're saying that you don't know yet, but it seems like you've got it all figured out. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline adverb clauses. A. Mr. Brooks had to leave while the meeting was still going. B. Could you put away the toys so that I don't trip over them? C. Although everything seems to be going well, I feel sad. D. You'd better go to the shower after you finish your workout. E. Whether you like it or not, you have to cook for yourself. F. Since you're going to the shop, could you buy some jam? And now, write four sentences with adverb clauses using the words in bracket. Because, after, once, then. And now, let's check your answers. While the meeting was still going, so that I don't trip over them. Although everything seems to be going well. After you finish your workout. Whether you like it or not. Since you're going to the shop. Sample answers. Susan couldn't attend her friend's wedding because she has a business trip. Come downstairs after you finish your homework. Once Kyle learned the truth, he couldn't remain their friend. This job is obviously better than your previous one. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about reported speech. Let's get started. When we want to tell somebody what someone else has said, we can use either direct speech, meaning exact words in quotation marks, or indirect speech, which are also known as reported speech. Now the latter variant is more common. Have a look at the examples over here. Liz said, I work as a nanny. 
Now this is a direct speech. Liz said that she works as a nanny, and this is a reported speech. Now, in reported speech, the reporting verb can stay in the present simple if the original word are still true or repeated very often. Have a look at the example below. Pam always tells me that she is going to get a gym membership. Now, the verb is in the present simple because this is something that Pam always says. And if something is no longer true or happened some time ago, there is a backshift of tenses in reported speech. For example, we can use the past simple instead of the present simple. Now let's have a look at the backshift of tenses. Present simple to past simple. Example of a direct speech? I like this movie. Reported speech. Kate told me that she liked that movie. Present continuous to past continuous. Direct speech. I'm working on the important project. Reported speech. Jim said that he was working on the important project. Past simple to past perfect. Direct speech. We bought a house. Reported speech. The Smiths said that they had bought a house. Present perfect to past perfect. Direct speech. I have known Mr. Ola for ages. Reported speech. Peter claimed that he had known Mr. Ola for ages. Present perfect continuous to past perfect continuous. Direct speech. I have been waiting for you for an hour. Reported speech. Mike complained that he had been waiting for me for an hour. Past continuous to past perfect continuous. Direct speech. We were working day and night. Reported speech. They told me that they had been working day and night. Will to would. Direct speech. I will see you tomorrow. Reported speech. Andrew told me that he would see me the following day. Can to could. Direct speech. Can you open this jar? Reported speech. Betty asked me if I could open that jar. Note that we also need to change time or place expressions and demonstratives in reported speech. Have a look at the table below. Now, in direct speech, we use today. Reported speech, that day. Now, then, yesterday, the day before, days ago, days before, last week, the week before, next year, the following year, tomorrow, the next, or the following day, here, there, this, that, these, those. Now, the structure of the reported clause depends on whether we are reporting a statement, a question, or an imperative. A. Statements consisting of a reporting clause and a reported clause begin with that, although we can omit that in informal speech. Have a look at the example below. My sister told me that... She wanted to move to China for a year. Note that that can be omitted in informal speech. B. Yes or no questions and questions with or consist of a reporting clause and a reported clause begin with if or whether. Note that the reported clause does not retain the word order of questions. 
make sure to use if or whether plus subject plus verb instead. Have a look at the examples below. My boss asked me if or whether I had written the report on Thursday. If or whether I, subject, had written verb. My boss asked me if or whether I had written the report on Thursday or Friday. Dummy wedge questions consist of a reporting clause and a reported clause beginning with W wedge word, such as who, what, when, where, why, or how. Note that the reported clause does not retain the word order of questions. Make sure to use if or whether plus subject plus verb instead. Have a look at the examples below. Jack wanted to know what happened to our colleague. The police was investigating who lived in that building. C. Imperatives. Imperatives consist of a reporting clause and a reported clause beginning with not to plus infinitive. Have a look at the examples below. My mom told me not to come home very late. She also asked me to buy some bread. And now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that if something is no longer true or happened some time ago, there is a backshift of tenses in reported speech. Now provide the reported speech of the sentences below. She said, I'll go to Kate's place. She said that she would go to Kate's place. Mr. Kane stated the prices are expected to rise. Mr. Kane stated that the prices are expected to rise. Nancy asked, Peter, where do you live? Nancy asked Peter where he lived. And now read the sentences below and change the time or place expressions and demonstratives in reported speech accordingly. He promised me he would call me tomorrow. He promised me that he would call me the following day. Lucy said that she bought this blouse and these jeans online. Lucy said that she bought that blouse and those jeans online. Here is a short story using reported speech. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. How did the meeting go? Well, our boss told us that he had been researching the current market and he had found an additional source of funding. And what will you be doing now? Will your tasks change? He stated that some of us would be working on new projects the following month, but he couldn't disclose any details at that time. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and find mistakes. A. Sarah was complaining that she had spent a month looking for an apartment. B. They asked me if did I want to sign up for free. C. Peter told me that they were going to Bali. D. It was stated that the meeting will be called off. E. 
Bill told me that he had never be abroad. And now, write sentences in reported speech. A. My parents said to me, Don't worry. B. I'm busy looking for an apartment now, Kelly said. C. Why weren't you at the party? He asked. D. It is written, Mr. A will launch a new project. E. Philip asked, Jane, do you want to go to the movies with me? And now, let's check your answers. Sarah was complaining that she had spent a month looking for an apartment. They asked me if I wanted to sign up for free. Peter told me that they were going to Bali. It was stated that the meeting would be called off. Bill told me that he had never been abroad. My parents told me not to worry. Kelly said that she was busy looking for an apartment then. He asked me why I hadn't been at the party. It was written that Mr. A would launch a new project. Philip asked Jane if she wanted to go to the movies with him. Thank you for watching this tutorial.